Here I am on my radio show. I'm live on my radio show at the end of the call. I'm doing a new section on my radio show. That's why I'm recording a video for you guys on YouTube that haven't listened to my radio program. Go to blogtalkradio.com forward slash Major Tim to ground control to listen into Major Tim to ground control, which is the most amazing comedy healing show you'll ever see in this matrix field or on the planet Earth or in anywhere else in the galaxy. Okay, so what I was doing on the show is I was teaching mu a new form of muscle testing I want for one. So just first flip someone off, and but don't, that's bad, don't do it. Go like that, and then make the figure B with your finger there. And then you're not going to put any pressure whatsoever. You're just going to say, my name's Tim, my name's Tim, my name's Tim, my name's Bob. And it should just fall because your finger's tired. It's tired of holding up like that. So once you get to a no answer, your body's going to let go and say, my name's Tim, my name's Tim, my name's Bob. It just falls. So that means you know it's no. That's my muscle testing. I'm going to call it the flipping off with one. Like if you had this finger broken, you couldn't do the double flip off. You're doing a one flip off, and you're just holding that on top of it. Okay, that's my new way. Oh, I also want to share what I did before on a call. I realized it's like rolling a booger in your finger. So if you're rolling a booger in your finger like that, and you say, my name is Tim, my name is Tim, my name is, Tim, my name is Bob, somehow it'll slip up like it just did. It kind of stopped there. So I call that the booger rolling technique. That's also a good one. I learned that from my daughter because she likes to roll boogers. No, I used to like rolling boogers. I still like to roll boogers. But anyway, I'm on the radio show, so I can't be talking like that. Okay, what we're going to do, today is the first and only time you've ever had on the show a reading of this book that I wanted to read a long time ago. It says The Great Dialogues of Plato, but don't let the title think that's what it's about because Plato was just the st stenographer he just took notes for his teacher, Socrates. So it should be called The Great Dialogues of Socrates. So welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is the first Bedtime Stories with Tim Janakis. This might be a new thing on my Wednesday call. So call in 9 p.m. Wednesday, New York time, which is 6 p.m. in California time Wednesday, hump day, which is also 7 o'clock uh, mountain time or 8 p.m. central time to... At the end of the show, after about 45 minutes, after I help many callers, we do happy story time with Tim. So this is the first story. It's called the Mino, M-E-N-O. You can look it up online. There's probably many different translations. This is one guy's translation. So I like to read many different translations because you'll get a different take on what it actually is. Unless you understand the ancient Greek that Socrates spoke in and you got an actually old, old manuscript that hasn't been translated into the new Greek, you won't exactly know what he said. But the good thing is, what he actually said couldn't even be recorded in the ancient Greek language. It's actually what you'll hear in your head when I say this, no matter what broken language I use on planet Earth, because they're all broken. Okay, so this Socrates, this is between Menon, M-E-N-O-N, -E M -E -N -N, Socrates, and a slave of Menon, and Anatos, which is spelled A-N-Y-T-O-S. Introductory notes. This dialogue is a discussion of the nature of virtue and particularly the question whether virtue can be taught. So people say, can you teach energy healing? And I say, I don't know. Can you teach writing music? I don't know because I don't know how to write music. I write 60 songs and I've also done lots of healing modalities. Do I, do I know how to do it? No. I just be it. So that's what he's teaching here. It's just a matter of remembering who you are. Okay. So Menon was a wealthy young Thessalian nobleman, like most of the people who came to Socrates, they were noblemen. He took part, probably not long afterwards, as a Thessalian general in the famous expedition of the 10,000 under Cyrus in 401 BC against the king of Persia. He was captured and was put to death by the king. Uh, Xenophon, which is X-E-N-O-P-H-O-N, considered him a treacherous, self-seeking character. The March Up Country, uh, okay, that's from The March Up Country. That's a book by Rosé. Okay, so Anatos appears later as one of the three accusers at Socrates' trial. So Socrates was put to death by trial. And one of the three accusers was, was one of these guys, too. Um, because everyone who spoke with Socrates was blown away by what he said, and they wanted to kill him because, like anyone who's a good healer, 
they're going to say things that make you push you outside of your reality to step into a reality that you never thought was possible but that is painful for a lot of people because they're not willing to realize that the thing they call reality is actually a myth and a creation of their mind okay so Menon says can you tell me Socrates can virtue be taught or if not does it come by practice or does it come neither by practice nor by teaching but do people get it by nature or in other ways so what he's basically saying is the same thing people say nurture or nature which is can anything be taught or is it like can you teach a person how to be good or are they just good people or bad people Socrates is saying the answer to that question and many other questions can you teach a person to be a genius or they're born a genius can you teach a person to, person to be a great songwriter or is he just born a great songwriter and what he says in this is the same thing I would say too but that it's remembering who you truly be so here we will go. I'm going to take a drink. Okay, so Socrates says, My dear Menon, the Thelesians have always had a good name in our nation. They were always admired as good horsemen and men with full purses. I mean, they were rich. Now, it seems to me, we must add brains to the list. He's trying to say, yeah, you're smart for asking such a good question. I didn't think the lazy, what he's basically saying is he says, I didn't think all you people, I just thought you guys were rich and good at war. But now I know some of you guys are smart asses too. So he's he's good at turning around everyone and, and, and at the same time complimenting them with a double speak compliment and put down, which is a great way of uh, starting a conversation with someone who's a arrogant fool who came to try to prove that Socrates was full of shit. Okay, now it seems to me, okay, your friend Aristippus is a very good example, and his townsman from Larissa, Gorgias, wherever that is, is the man who set it all going. As soon as he got there, all of the Eludias, which I don't know how to pronounce that, I'm not going to try to, it's in ancient word, were at the, his feet. Your own bosom friend, Aristophos, was one. So he's saying your old, your old lover, bosom friend, bosom buddies, uh, lover in a good way, not a gay way. Not to mention the rest of Thelesia, Thessila. I'm so bad. And that's my uh, clock saying it's time to end the show, but I'm not going to listen to the clock. Just don't worry about the song playing in the background. That's one hour mark. So now it is 10 o'clock p.m. in in New York. I have never been to New York. Someday I'll be in New York and I'll be there with a whole entourage. Okay, here's a custom he taught you at least to answer generously and without fear if anyone asks you a question. Quite natural, of course, when one knows the answer. <laughs> So he says, I'm going to answer your question, and I'm going to answer without any fear, just like your general taught you, because I know the answer to your question. Okay, but then he says, just what he did himself, he was a willing victim of the civilized world of Hellas. Any Hellene might ask him anything he liked, and every mortal soul got his answer. So he said he was a fool for answering all the questions he thought he knew the answers to. Because he's saying, I don't know anything. And that's how he always answered any questions. I don't know anything. But what I do know is what I'm going to tell you. Okay. But here, my dear Menon, it is just the opposite. There is a regular famine of brain here, brains here. <laughs> he says there's a regular famine of brains. We're starving for intelligence here because we're all brainless. And you're part of the world seems to hold a monopoly in that article so he says you guys are all brain dead <laughs> i love it socrates was the greatest comic that ever lived i was the second greatest because i was one of socrates disciples but i won't tell you who that was at least if you do not at least if you do ask anyone here a question like that all you will get is a laugh and quote my good man you must think i am inspired Virtue, can it be taught? Or how does it come? Do I know that? So far from knowing whether it can be taught or can't be taught, 
I don't know even the least little thing about virtue. I don't even know what virtue is, he says. So he says, that's what you're going to get if you ask anyone where I come from, because everyone doesn't know the shit about anything. So he he basically talked to the most great, the greatest so-called greatest thinkers of all parts of the Mediterranean world, and he showed them that they're all full of shit, basically by asking them questions and getting them stumped about with questions, which I'm going to tell you, show you how it's done. Okay, the reason he did that is because he was the first access consciousness facilitator. So you thought uh, the founder of access consciousness, uh, Dr. Dane here, actually he's the co-creator, the founder of Access Conscious, Gary Douglas, was the founder of Access Conscious. No, it was Socrates. Okay, so just go read Socrates and you'll see that asking questions is all he did. And that's all that that Dane or Gary does. So if I say I'm pre-certified, decertified, quasi-certified Access Conscious Facilitator, you'll know why I'm saying that because I went to the real school of Access Conscious Facilitators, which was way back in the 4th century BCE. Okay, anyways, on with the dialogue. I'm in the same fix myself, Menon. I am as poor of the article as the rest of us, and I have to blame myself that I don't know the least little thing about virtue. And when I don't know what a thing is, how can I know its quality? Take Menon, for example. If someone does, doesn't does know in the least who Menon is, how can he know whether Menon is handsome or rich or even a gentleman or perhaps just the opposite? Do you think he can? <laughs> so what he's saying is to men on is you don't even know yourself. You think you're rich. You think you're handsome. You think you're such a fucking smart ass, clever know-it-all. And you're here to try to prove me wrong by asking me questions you think you're going to stump me with. And I'm going to show you that you don't know anything because you're full of shit yourself. So that's where this bullshit came up and the bat shit came up because he was showing everyone was bat shit crazy because they were all being bought and sold into the reality that they were being bought and sold in, which was a cult. And all cultures are cults. That's why they're called cults. C-U-L-T, sure. Culture is, is a cult. Every time you buy into the reality, you're becoming part of the cult, of the culture. So Menon says, not I, but, you, but look here, Socrates, don't you really know what virtue is? Are we to give that report to you in Larissa? So he says, so do you want me to go back to where I came from, who came? I was sent by many intelligent people in my hometown to come talk to you because you're supposed to know everything. And you're telling me you don't even know what virtue is? But he said that about everything. No matter what you asked him, he said, I don't know anything about that. Now, what, what are we going to do? We don't know anything about whether you're handsome or whether you're smart. And even if I don't know you, I can figure out whether you're handsome or smart and rich by not even knowing you because... We have access to knowledge because it's our inherent birthright as infinite beings to know everything there is to know because everything that's ever been known, we can know too, he's going to basically say in these next lines. Okay, so he says, just so, my friend, uh, and more, I never met anyone who did, so far as I know. <laughs> So he says, you want me to go back to Larissa and tell them you don't know anything about virtue? He says, yeah, because I don't know anything about virtue and I've never met anyone in this part of the world that knows anything about virtue. So he says, what did you, what, did you not meet Georgius when he was here? Socrates says, oh yes, I met him. Okay, Menon says, didn't you think he knew? And Socrates says, I have rather a poor memory, Menon, so I can't say at the moment whether I did think so, but perhaps he did know, or perhaps you know what he said. Kindly remind me then what he did say. You say it yourself, if you say it yourself if you like, for I suppose you think as he thought. So he says, I don't remember anything he said, because he didn't say anything at all, because actually everything he said was pretty much bullshit so if you if you agree with what he said because you think he knows why don't you tell me what he said because I don't understand anything he said because he was just talking out his ass basically what he's saying so Menon says oh yes and then Socrates says then let us leave him out of it since he is not here tell me yourself in heaven's name Menon what do you say virtue is tell me and don't grudge it it will be the luckiest lie I ever told 
if it turns out that you know and Georges know, knew, and I went and said I never met anyone who did know. So he's basically saying, I listened to everything that guy you thought so smart knows everything about virtue. Tell me what he thought about virtue. And he didn't have anything to say anything about it because everything he said was full of shit. And if you want to tell me the same thing he said, I'm going to tell you, basically I'm going to show you that you're full of shit too. Okay? Now why is he doing this? Is he because, he because he's cruel and because he's mean? No, because he has infinite compassion. So every time I work with you on the show, I do the same thing. I want you to remember who you truly be because if you remember that you're an infinite being from time without beginning because you were actually with me and Socrates back in the day, otherwise you wouldn't be calling into my show because you are part of the round table, table of King Arthur too, which was actually more than 13 people and we are all forming together to recreate the round table that was tried to create it in the United States and other places which wasn't created but we'll talk about that on another call because I don't want to get too much into that but anyway if you're stuck on the call and you're still listening and you're listening to this YouTube video, you know who you are. So let me take a drink before I say any more because this reality is not going to let me say everything I want to say all in one call. Okay, we're going to go on a little longer. Okay, so Menon says, That is nothing difficult, my dear Socrates. First, if you like, a man's virtue, that is easy. This is a man's virtue, to be able to manage public business and in doing it to help friends and hurt enemies and to take care and keep clear of such mischief himself or if you like a woman's virtue there's no difficulty there she must manage the house well and keep the stores all safe and obey her husband and a child's virtue is diff different for boy and girl and an el older man's, uh, uh, oh, sorry, and an older man's, a free man's, if you like, or a slave. So he's saying the slave has different virtue, a free man has different virtue, an old man has different virtue than a young man, and a boy has different virtue than a girl, and a wife has different virtue than a husband, and a businessman has different virtue than a common man. He's basically saying all the bullshit that everyone tells you in the caste system of every country, whether it's India or Japan, Japan still has a caste system. They're still stuck in the fucking prehistoric time where they think superiors are superior and inferiors are inferior, and, but there's no such thing as a caste system. There's no inferior or superior. We're all equal because I am he as you are he as you are me and we're all together. So whoever you want to put on a pedestal, I don't care if it's Jesus Christ, if it's Gandhi, if it's Nietzsche and Daishonin, if it's Daisaku Ikeda, anyone you put above you and you think is above you, it's you're fooling yourself. You're fooling yourself, and you know it. I won't play the song because I got busted on the last call for playing Sticks, but you know what song I'm talking about. Okay, so here we go. I'm going on. Okay, where are we at? Okay, so he's saying all these people have different virtues because they have different castes. They're in different societies, different roles in society. And as long as they follow in their caste system rule, and they follow the rules, and they don't break out of the mold that this reality is trying to hold them into, then they're virtuous, which is the ex exact opposite of virtue, which he's going to say here. Okay. There are a very large number of other virtues, so, so there is no difficulty in saying what virtue is. For according to each of our activities and ages, each of us has his virtue for doing each sort of work. And in the same way, Socrates, I think his vice. So no matter what our job is, we all have our virtues and we all have our vices. So I'm in Japan. So I, I go to the Hello Work, which is the unemployment office, and I say, I can sing, I can dance, I've worked in banking for nine years, I've been in sales for 20 years. I've uh, managed my own business in America, and they say, sorry, there's only one thing you can do in Japan, teach English, because that's the caste system in Japan. You only get one role because you're a white guy, and basically in America is the same thing. You're Mexican, you work in the field, or you clean the hotel toilets, okay? There's only two things you can do, which is a bunch of bullshit. No matter what your race is, no matter where you're from, you can do whatever the fuck you want if you're willing to break out of the goddamn system that they're trying to fucking enslave you in no matter what you think. You think the rich person's not enslaved and the poor person's enslaved? They're all fucking enslaved. And that's basically what what uh, what uh, I Am the Walrus was talking about. 
Um, anyway, we're not going to get into all the lyrics of I Am the Walrus now because we're talking about Socrates. Okay, so he says, I see, okay, Socrates says, after he gives this long bullshit speech, he says, I seem to have been lucky indeed, my dear Menon. If I have been looking for one virtue and found a whole swarm of virtues in your store. So I, he told me, give me what virtue is, and you just gave me a whole bunch of bullshit virtue. So I was only looking for one thing called virtue, and you gave me a whole bunch of virtue, but it's not even anything I was wanting to look for. However, let us take up the image, Menon, the swarm. If I asked you what a bee really is, B as in bzzz, bee, and you answered that there are many different kinds of bees, what would you answer me if I asked you then, do you say there are many different kinds of bees differing from each other in being bees more or less? Or do they differ in some other respect, for example, in size or beauty and so forth? Tell me, how would you answer that question? And Mendon says, I should say that they are not different at all one from the other in beehood. So in being bees and part of beehood, they're all bees, whether they're big or small, or whether they're fast-flying bees or slow-flying bees, whether they sting you in the ass or whether they sting you in the eyeball. They're all fucking bees, right? Okay, so Socrates says, suppose I went on to ask, tell me this, then, what do you say exactly is that in which they all are the same and not different? Could you answer anything to that? And Menon says, oh, yes. Socrates says, well, then, now, then, for virtue. Even if there are many different kinds of them, they all have one something, the same in all, which makes them virtue. So if one is asked what is virtue, one must have this clear in his view before he can answer the question. Do you understand what I mean? Menon says, I think I understand, but I do not yet grasp your question as I could wish. So he says, okay. Do you think that virtue alone is like that, Menon? I mean, one thing in a man and one in a woman and so forth? Or do you also say the same of health and size and strength? Do you think health is one thing in a man and another thing in a woman? Or is the essence of the same everything, if it be health, whether it be in a man or anything else whatsoever? So he says, you told me virtue is this and that and this and that based on the person's role, the burst of base and the versus case, which isn't virtue at all. That's just a bunch of differences you're going to call virtue by not answering what, fuck, what the fuck virtue is. And I'm telling you, if health is in a woman and health is in a man, is it any different? No. If a bee is a big fat bumblebee or is, is, a, is a wasp different? No. That makes it a bee. Something that makes it not a bee. Tell me what that is and I'll tell you what B is. Tell me what virtue makes it in virtue and not just in a factory worker, or in a, in, a, in a soldier, in a, a man or a woman. There's something that has to be what virtue is that's not different. Otherwise, it's not virtue. Okay. So he says, I think health is the same thing in both man and women. So Socrates says, and what of size and strength? If a woman is strong... Is it the same essence and the same strength which will make her strong? By the same strength, I mean this. The strength is not different in itself, whether it be in a man or a woman. Do you think there is any difference? So Menon says, why? No. And Socrates says, yes, virtue will differ in itself in a boy and in an old man, in a woman and in a man. Menon says, I don't help... I can't help thinking, Socrates, that this is not quite like those other things. Socrates says, very well. Did you not say that a man's virtue is to manage public affairs well, and a woman's is to manage the home? Manon says, yes, it is. Yes, I did say that. Socrates says, then, is it possible to manage a state or a home or anything well without managing temperately and justly? So he's basically trying to get at what really virtue is, is managing temperately and justly. So temperately here means with soundness of mind. So 
he says, in order to have virtue, we have to have soundness of mind or be mindful, which is the Buddha said, mindfulness. Basically, the Buddha said everything Socrates said, which is everything Jesus said, which is everything I say, because I am he as you are he as you are me, and we are all together, as, as my friend John JFK said. And actually, JFK said it too, but also Martin Luther King said it too, and also in the song I Am the Walrus, uh, the other shot guy said it too, which had long hair like me. Okay, but anyway, we're not going to go into all those stories, because they're all stories, because we're all this infinite potential beings. Okay, so he says, very well. Then, it is possible to... Okay, so he says, it's not possible to manage... He says, is it possible to manage a house or a state, whether you're a man or a woman and you have virtue, without having mindfulness and without having justice? And he says, certainly, or, or necessarily, necessarily, he says. So you have to have that. You have to have justice and you have to have temperance. Uh, okay, says then then both need the same th then both need the same thing. If they are to be good, both women and men need justice and temperance. And Menon says, so it seems. And Socrates says, What of the boy and the old man? If they are reckless and unjust, could they ever be good? And Menon says, No, certainly not. And Socrates says, but they must be temperate and just. And Simenon says, yes. Socrates says, then all men are good in the same way. For when they have the same thing, they are good. And Menon says, so it seems. So basically from his, his deductive, re deductive reasoning, he's proving that he's right in what he says because he can't be disproved in everything he says. So this is where he, he's able to sell people the truth whether they're willing to realize the truth or not by deductive reasoning. Okay, Menon says, certainly not. Okay, I'm just going to go a little bit longer on this one. We're going to take it up in the next next call. I just realized there's some pages ripped out of this book because this book is so old, it's falling apart. And I got this book from a guy, I wish I remembered who it was, but he had a friend's number. I'll probably try to call this friend because I got this like 20 years ago when I was a college student in Orange County. Actually, no, I was in San Diego going to Mesa College and the guy was a songwriter, and I forgot his name, but his friend was named Chris, and his other friend was named John, and his other friend's name was Tammy, and I have their phone numbers here. I'm going to call them and see if they're actually still in existence and find out who this person was that loaned him this book because this, this person was a good songwriter, and I'm sure he's a much better songwriter because I was wanting to be a songwriter at that time, and I was studying under him to be a songwriter. So if I got incredibly much better over those many years, he must have got much better as well if he didn't kill himself like most songwriters do. Okay, whether they choose someone to shoot them or not, that's up to them. But some people just kill themselves by creating cancer and other things. Okay, there was never a, a dead man who didn't want to die, which is one of the lyrics in Julian Lennon's song, which I think is a better songwriter than John Lennon even is, because he was able to step on his dad's shoulders and write better songs. So if you buy the last five CDs of Julian Lennon, you'll know what I'm talking about. Okay, so Socrates says... Since, therefore, the same virtue is in all, try to tell me and try to remember what Georges said it is and what you say too. Menon says, What can it be but to be able to rule men if you want something which is the same in all? So, so he says, The only thing that everyone has in virtue is to rule men, which is basically what a military leader says because he's a military leader. And Socrates is going to prove that's a bunch of fucking bullshit. Ruling men is not... So Nietzsche and Daishonin says, master your mind before it masters you. And that's the same thing Socrates said. He said, know, your, know thyself and you will know everyone else because you are everyone else. And you won't need to rule and control other people because you have control of yourself. And everyone will do what you want them to do because you will be the one they're going to be looking after because you're the only one that has self-control because they have no self-control whatsoever. Okay, so that's what I'm here to do is to teach you guys self-control by showing you how out of control I am. <laughs> that was meant to be ironic. Okay, what what can it be put... Okay, what? so Menon says, what can it be but to be able to rule man if you want something which is the same in all? Socrates says, 
That is just what I do want. But it is the same virtue in a boy, Menon, and a slave. For each of them to be able to rule his master. And do you think he that ruled would still be a slave? Menon says, no, Socrates. I certainly don't think that. So he says, if a slave is willing to have virtue or really remember who he is, he can rule his master. And he says a boy can rule their parent if he's willing to have virtue, which is self-mastery and the ability to control people by controlling yourself, which is the only thing you really need to control because you can't control other people. But you can be totally out of control like I am and actually realize that that's more in control than anyone is who thinks they're in control. Because anyone who thinks they're in control is actually out of more out of control than I am because everything you're trying to prove is what you believe you're not. So anyone who's trying to control you or control their government or tro control the world is someone who's completely out of control because they wouldn't be trying to control you and can try and control other people if they weren't so out of control. They're out of control because they have no self-control. I have complete self-control so I can be completely out of control and still have ease, joy, and glory in everything I do. Okay. So he says, Socrates says, uh, so he says a, a slave can control his master if he has this thing called virtue. And Menon says, no, Socrates, I certainly don't think that, that the, the slave wouldn't be able to control his master if he had virtue. So he's basically agreeing with him. It's a negative question. So, okay, Socrates says, for it isn't reasonable, my fellow my good fellow but here is another thing to consider you say able to rule in quotes shall we not add it to it justly not unjustly so he says you say the ability to rule is the what is virtue to rule men is what this warrior says virtue is and he says do you think it's the ability to rule justly or the ability to rule unjustly do you think there's a really difference and Menon says, virtue, Menon, or no, he says, I think so, yes, for justice is virtue, Socrates. So Socrates says, virtue, Menon, or a virtue. So, so he says, justice is just one virtue, that isn't virtue. And, and, the, and Menon says, what do you mean by that? Socrates says, the same as in anything else, for example... If you please take roughness or roundness, okay, a roundness. This I would say is a figure, not simply just figure. I would say so because there are other figures like squares and rectangles and triangles. There's other ones. So a round is a figure, but it isn't figure because figures uh, encompass everything. So I'm going to go on from here later on because this is going to be a long, 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 long dialogue and a lot of things I have to say about it, but just know that he's going to basically tear apart all the bullshit lies of his cult, otherwise known as culture, and show that they're all full of shit, and that's why they killed him. And they asked him, what do you want to, your death sentence to be? Because in that time, there was a justice system where you get to, you get to uh, be judged by your peers, and your peers wasn't just people who lived in the same socioeconomic background as you. They were actually your friends and brothers. So you had one family member, one good friend, and one neighbor, and one other pe person, and they all judged you after the trial. What was your what was your prosecution? And you got to say to them what you wanted your uh, punishment to be. So he says at his trial, which I'll get into on another reading, when he was going to be killed, he said the judge says. Okay, Socrates, you've been, con you've been condemned to death. It's your choice to either take death or to recommend to the jury of your peers what you think is a better sentence. He says, yes. What I recommend is because I've been helping people break out of the reality that they're stuck in, which is basically all the lies they're stuck in, and I've been helping them realize that they're infinite beings and they're, they're able to know their infiniteness by asking questions, I think my 
penalty for that is I should be sent around by the government to every other country as an ambassador of peace to teach them what I've been teaching in this country that has helped so many people free themselves from all the bullshit your government has put them through. <laughs> That's what he said. And they said, sorry. Even his peers said, we're not going to pay for you to go all around the world and do what you've done to all the great thinkers of our time and show them that they're all full of shit because you're the only one who knows that you know that you know because you know that you don't know nothing. So he said, basically, I don't know anything. I don't believe anything, I don't know anything, but I'm willing to learn anything if you're willing to teach me. And he would ask many questions, and in the questioning, he would bring out the most brilliant conversations in the people that thought they knew nothing about what they thought they didn't know nothing about. And he taught them that they actually know more than they're willing to know. And that's when I'm here on the call to teach you guys. So this is just their first bedtime story for the new year. 2016 is coming. It hasn't come yet. It's coming in springtime with the real new when Jesus was when I was born when I walked in and I'm here to let you know that I and you are me all together in a Monday morning early bright and early which is late fall. Second reading of Plato's Meno and this is bedtime stories for people in Japan. Oh, that, that's bright. Okay, I got my light over here. There we go. Okay, I'm live on the air, but uh, I'm putting this up on YouTube for the people that don't listen to my radio show. If you don't listen to my radio show, wonder why you don't, because it's the greatest radio show on the planet or anywhere else in the Matrix field. So go to www.blogtalkradio forward slash Major Tim to ground control. I'm now almost 12 o'clock midnight in Japan. I'm going to go to bed real soon, but I'm just going to do a little bedtime story for myself. For the people in America, it's morning time, and they're just waking up, so it's a wake-up story. Here we go. The dialogue we were working on with between Socrates and this punk-ass guy called Menon who thinks he knows everything. Okay, so we left off with the Socrates saying, the same as in everything else. For example, if you please take roundness, this is... This, I would say, is a figure, not simply thus figure. I would say so because there are other figures. So he's trying to say, the first question was asked was whether um, virtue can be taught or it's something you naturally are born with. And Socrates is going to say in this, this dialogue after he t teaches this punk-ass guy what... Um, what virtue is, is that it's inherent in everyone and all you have to do is remember who you truly are from all the past lifetimes that you renew everything because you you have lived billions of lifetimes and you've been everywhere in the, in the multiverse. He's going to say it not like that, but that's the way I would say it. But that's coming up maybe in a future one because we're not going to get there tonight, but we're just going to do a little bit tonight for you people in the morning, a little bit in the morning. Okay, so, so Menon says, what you said was quite right since I agree that there are other virtues besides justice, so there's many types of virtues, justice isn't the only virtue. Uh, what are they? Tell me, just as I would tell you other figures if you ask, then you tell me some other virtues. Menon says, very well, courage, I think, is a virtue, and temperance, and wisdom, and high-mindedness, and plenty more. High-mindedness. Okay, that's a virtue to according to Mena. I don't know exactly what he means by high-mindedness, but we'll find out here. So Socrates says, Here we are again, Menon. We looked for one virtue and found many. Although that was in another way, but the one that is in all those things we cannot find. So he's trying to know what virtue is. And and Menon keeps giving him all these virtues. That Those are virtues, but those aren't virtue. Virtue is the category that sums up all of them. So what is in all those virtues that are virtuous? And then we'll know what virtue is. Okay? So he says, uh, Menon says, I can't see my way yet, Socrates, to find the one virtue you seek in them all, as we did with the other things. Socrates says, that is quite likely, 
but I will do my best to bring us a step forward if I can. You understand, no doubt, that it is the same with everything. If someone should ask you what I mentioned just now, what is figure men on, and you said to him roundness, and if he asked you, as I would, is roundness figure or a figure, I suppose you would say a figure. Menon says, yes, to be sure. Socrates says, because there are other figures, isn't that the reason? And Menon says, yes. Socrates says, and if he asked further what other figures, you would tell him. And Menon says, so I would. Socrates says, and again, if he asked you in the same way what color is, and you said white, the man would ask next, is white color or a color? And you would say a color because there are others. Menon said, yes, I should. And Socrates says, and if he re requested you to tell him other colors, you would tell him others that are no less colors than white. And Menon says, yes. And Socrates says, if then he followed up the argument like me and said, quote, we always arrive at a multitude and I don't want that. But since you call these many by one name and say they are all figures without exception, and that too, even if they are opposite to each other, what is that which contains the round no less than the straight? You name it indeed figure, and say the round is no less figure than the straight. Is not that what you say? Menon says it is. Socrates says, well, then you say that, do you then mean that the round is no more round than the straight, or the straight no straighter than the round? So Menon says, not at all, Socrates. And Socrates says, yes, you do say that the round is no more figure than the straight, or the straight than the round. Menon says, quite true. Socrates says, then what is this name figure? Try to tell me if someone asked you like that about color or figure and you said, my good man, I don't understand what you want and you don't know what you mean and I don't know what you mean. Perhaps he would have been surprised and would have said, don't you understand that I am looking for the common element in these? Or would you have nothing to say if someone should ask, what is there in the round and straight and so forth, all that you call figures, the same in all? Try to say that you may have a little practice for your reply about virtue. So Menon says, whoops. These pages are sticking together. This book is so old. Okay, Menon says, No, no, Socrates, you say. Socrates says, Shall I grant you that favor? Menon says, Please do. Socrates says, And then, will you do me the favor of telling me about virtue? And Menon says, Yes, yes, I will. Socrates says, Then, I must do my best. It is worthwhile. Menon says, That it is. Socrates says, Come along then. Let me try to tell you what figure is, just like, just think a moment. Will you accept this for it? Let us suppose that figure is the only thing in the world which is always found along with color. Good enough, eh? Or do you want something else? If you give me an answer like that about virtue, I shall be quite content, I assure you. Menon says, but that's silly, my dear Socrates. Socrates says, how do you mean? Menon says, that figure, according to your statement, is what always goes with color. Very well. But if someone said he didn't know what color is, and if he were in the same difficulty about as about figure, what do you think you should have answered them? Socrates says, only the truth. And if my questioner were one 
of these clever fellows who just chop logic and argue to win, I would answer him, I have said my say. If I am wrong, it is your business to take up the argument and to refute it. But if we were friends like you and me now, who wish to have a talk together, you see I must answer more gently and more like friends talking together, and perhaps it is more like friends talking together, not only to answer with truth, but to use only what the one who is questioned admits that he knows. Then, that is how I will try to talk to you. Tell me, if you please, do you speak of an end or of anything? Let me take a drink, sorry. So he says, do you speak of an end to anything? I mean, something like this, a boundary or a verge. These are all the same thing. Perhaps Prodicios, which is another person, might not agree with us, but you at any rate say that a thing is bounded and ended. That's the sort of thing I mean, nothing elaborate. And Menon says, oh yes, I use those words, and I think I understand you. Socrates says, very well. You speak of a surface, or a solid, as it may be, like those things in geometry. Menon says, yes, I use those words. Socrates says, there's enough then already for me to explain what I call figure. With every figure, I say that to which the solid extends is the figure. To put it shortly, I would say that figure is the boundary of a solid. Menon says, and what of color, Socrates? Socrates says, you're a bully, Menon. You worry an old man to answer questions, and you won't trouble to remember what Gorius said virtue is? Menon says, oh, I'll tell you that as soon as you tell me this, my dear Socrates. Socrates says, anyone could tell you're a handsome man and have lovers by only hearing you talk, even if he were blindfolded. Menon says, why, pray? Socrates says, because in your talk you do nothing but lay commands on people like young society beauties who are regular tyrants as long as they are young and good-looking. And perhaps you have found me out already. I can't resist the handsome. So, I will do you the favor of answering. This is back in a time when homosexuality was much more open than it is nowadays, obviously. But he's, he's willing to be homosexual-like, not because he is a homosexual, but because he doesn't have homophobia, which most people have. Even I have, because I'm a straight person and I want to prove my straightness by not be acting like a homosexual. Anyway, we'll get into that on another day. Okay, so um, he says, yes, do me the favor. Socrates says, then, do you wish me to answer in the style of Gregorius so that you could most easily follow? And Menon says, of course I do. So Socrates imitates Gregorius how he says it. He says, well, you people say that emanations or films are given off from things. That is the science of Emp Empedocles, which is another philosopher. Menon says, certainly. Socrates says, and there are pores or passages, and the emanations go pouring into them and through them. Menon says, quite so. And Socrates says, and some, some of the films fit some of the pores, but some are too small or too large. Menon says, that is true. Socrates says, you speak of sight also. Menon says, yes. Socrates says, then from these things comprehend what I tell thee, as Pindar said. Pindar is P-I-N-D-A-R. Color is an emanation from figures and is symmetrically and is symmetrical with sight and perceptible by sense. Menon says, <laughs> that is an excellent answer of yours, my dear Socrates. Socrates says, perhaps because you are used to 
the way it is put. And at the same time, I think you notice that you could define in this way what sound is and smell and many other such things. And Menon says, certainly, yes. And Socrates says, because the answer is in high poetic style, so you like it better than the one about figure. Menon says, I do, certainly. Socrates says, but it is not so good, my dear son, of Alexdemos, Alex which is his father, maybe. I am convinced the other is better. And I think you would agree with me if you were not obliged to go off before the mysteries, as you said yesterday, you have only to stay and be initiated. So they're all in mystery schools. The mysteries are the secret cabals that later become the all the other secret societies, which later become the uh, many other ones. I can't even think of all their names because it's now past 12 o'clock midnight, so we won't get into it. I think I'm going to go on more about this later, but let's just go a little bit further so you know where I'm going to lay off, and I'm going to tell you the basic summation of what I just read really quickly before I go to bed. Oh, I would, oh, I would stay, my dear Socrates, if you would only go on talking like this. So he said, I would, I would not go along with the cabal and go into the secret society and go into my initiations with the the Colts, if uh, you would just keep talking like this, because you're, be, you're now being so poetic, and they, they all do that in the little secret societies that I belong to. So, he says, Indeed, my will shall not be wanting. I would go on talking like this for both our sakes, but I fear I shall not be able to go on talking like this for long. But now, please, try yourself to keep yourself keep your promise to give me a general description of virtue. What is it? No more turning the singular into the plural, as witty people say whenever you smash something. Just leave virtue sound and whole and tell me what it is. I have shown you how to do it by my examples. Menon says, Then, my dear Socrates, virtue seems to me to be as the poets say, quote, to rejoice in what is handsome and to be able, I agree with the poets. And I say virtue is to desire handsome things and to be able to provide them. So Socrates says, do you say that the man who desires handsome things is desirous of good things? Uh, Menon says, by all means. Socrates says, do you imply that there are some that desire bad things and others good? Don't you think, my dear fellow, that all desire good things? Menon says, no, I don't. Socrates says, but some desire bad things, right? And Menon says, yes. So Socrates says, thinking the bad thing to be good, you mean or even recognizing that they are bad, still they desire them. Menon says, both, I think. Socrates says, do you really think, my dear Menon, that anyone, knowing the bad things to be bad, still desires them? Menon says, certainly. And Socrates says, what, what does he desire, do you say, to have them? Menon says, to have them, what else? Socrates says, thinking that the bad things benefit him that has them, or knowing that they injure whomever get them. Menon says, some thinking that the bad things benefit, some also knowing that they injure. Socrates says, do those who think that the bad things benefit know that the bad things are bad? Menon says, I don't think that at all. I don't think that at all. Socrates says, then, it is plain that those who desire bad things are those who don't know what, what they are, but they desire what they thought were good, whereas they really are bad. So, those who do not know what they are, but think they are good, clearly desire the good. Is not that so? Menon says, it really seems like it. Socrates says, very well, those who desire the bad things, as you say, 
but yet think that bad things injure whomever get them, know, I suppose, that they themselves will be injured by them. Menon said, they must. Socrates says, but do not these believe that those who are injured are miserable in so far as they are injured? Menon says, they must believe that too. Socrates says, miserable means wretched. Menon says, so I think. Socrates says, well, is there anyone who wishes to be miserable and wretched? And uh, Menon says, I think not, Socrates. So then he goes on. Then nobody desires bad things, my dear Menon, nobody, unless he wishes to be like that. For what is the depth of misery other than to desire bad things and to get them? Menon says, it really seems that is the truth, Socrates, and no one desires what is bad. Socrates says, you said just now, didn't you, that virtue is to desire good things and to be able to provide them? Menon says, yes, I did. Socrates says, well, one part of what you said, the desiring, is in all, and in this respect, one man is no better than another. Menon says, it seems so. Socrates says, it is clear then that if one is better than another, he must be better in the ability. Socrates says, certainly. Socrates says, then, according to your argument, virtue is the power to get good things. Menon says, my dear Socrates, the whole thing, I must admit, seems to be exactly as you take it. And then Socrates goes on. Now let us see whether your last is true. Perhaps you might be right. You say virtue is to be able to provide the good. Menon says, quite so. Socrates says, don't you call good such things as health and wealth? Let me take a drink. <clears throat> We're going to end in a moment. I'm just going to sum up this when I get to the point where it needs to be summed up. Okay. Don't you call good such things as health and wealth? Menon says, yes. And to possess gold and silver and public honor and appointments. Socrates says, don't you say some other things are good besides these? Menon says, no, at least I mean all such things as those. Socrates says, very well. To provide gold and silver is virtue. According to Menon, the family friend of the great king, do you add to your providing, my dear men, on the qualification fairly and justly, or does that make no difference to you? And if a man provides them unjustly, do you call it virtue all the same? Menon says, Oh, dear me, no, Socrates. Socrates says, It is vice then. Menon says, dear me, yes, of course. Socrates says, it is necessary then, as it seems, to add to this getting justice or temperance or piety or some other bit of virtue, or else it will not be virtue, although it provides good things. Menon says, why? How could it be virtue without these? Socrates says, and not to get gold and silver when that is not just, neither for yourself nor anyone, is not this not getting also virtue. Menon says, it looks like it. So you can't do anything unjustly and call it virtuous. Whether you're getting good or whether you think you're getting good or not, if it's done unjustly, it's not good. Okay, so Socrates says, then the getting of good things would not be virtue any more than the not getting, but as it seems, getting with justice would be virtue, and getting with such qualifications, vice. Menon says, I think it must be as you put it. Socrates says, now we said a little while ago that each of them is a bit of virtue, justice and temperance, and all these things. Menon says, yes. Socrates says, then... Are you making fun of me, Menon? Menon says, how so, Socrates? 
Socrates says, because I begged you just now not to break virtue into bits or give me virtue as a handful of small change, but I gave you specimens to show you, show how you ought to answer. And you simply pay no attention. Now you tell me virtue is to be able to get good things with justice, and justice, you said, is a bit of virtue. Menon says, yes, that is what I said. Menon says, it follows then from what you agree that to do whatever we do along with a bit of virtue is virtue. For you say justice is a bit of virtue, and so that each of those bits, well, why do I say this? Because when I begged you to tell me what whole virtue is, instead of telling me that, Far from it. You say that every action is virtue if it be done with a bit of virtue, just as if you had explained what virtue is as a whole, and I should know it at once when if you dropped your coin up into the farthings. Okay, I missed this one. Let me see. Let me read that one sentence again because that didn't make sense to me. If, okay, because when I begged you to tell me what whole virtue is, instead of telling me that, far from it, you say that every action is virtue if it be done with a bit of virtue, just as if you had explained what virtue is as a whole, and I should know it at once, even if you chopped your coin up into farthings. Okay, so you ch he's chopping up into his logic into small bits, and he thinks it's still the whole. Okay, farthings are small, smaller coins. Okay, I got it now. Then I must put the very same question from the beginning. As it seems, my dear friend Menon, what is virtue? If a little bit of virtue would make any action virtue, for that is as much as saying, whenever anyone says it, that all action with virtue is virtue. Don't you think yourself that I must put the same question again? Or do you believe that we can know what a bit of virtue is when we do not know virtue itself? Menon says, I don't believe that. Socrates says, perhaps you remember that when I answered you about figure a while ago, we excluded such an answer as might try to explain things by using what was not yet agreed between us, but what we were seeking still. And it says, we did right to exclude that. Socrates says, then don't you do it now, my dear fellow. We are, tr we are still trying to find out what virtue is as a whole, and pray, do not believe you will make that clear to anyone by using bits of virtue in your answer. You will never explain anything to anyone by the same manner of speaking, but you will again come up against the same question. What this virtue is which you bring into your explanation? Do you think there's something in what I say? Menon says, I think you are quite right. So he says, then, beginning an answer, what is virtue, according to you and your friends? Menon says, well, my Socrates, you are just like what I always heard before met you, puzzled yourself and puzzling everyone else. Now, you seem to me to be regu a regular wizard. You doze do me with drugs and be wit with charms and drown me in puzzle them. I owe you just my life, if you will forgive a little jest. Your men and the rest of you are exactly a fat fish, and you sting like a stingray. Only go into one of those fish and you, get, you go numb. And that is the sort of thing you seem to have done to me. Really and truly, my soul is numb, and my mouth is numb, and what answer you I do not know. Yet, 
I have a thousand times made long speeches about virtue before many a large audience, and good speeches too, as I was convinced, but now I have not a word to say at all as to what it is. I must say, you are wise not to sail ag to sail away or travel abroad, for if you did this as a foreigner in a foreign city, you would probably be run out as a wizard. Socrates says, you are a young rogue, Menon, and you almost took me in. Menon says, how, Socrates? Socrates says, I know why you made that comparison to me. Menon says, why do you think so? Socrates says, that I might make another of you. I know this, that all the famous beauties love being put into comparisons to pay them, you see, for comparisons of the beautiful are beautiful, I think, but I will not do it with you in return. Well, if this stingray is numb itself, as well as making others numb, I am like it. If not, I am not, for I am not clear-headed myself when I make others puzzled, but I am as puzzled as puzzled can be, and thus I make others puzzled too. So now, what virtue is, I do not know, but you knew, perhaps, before you touched me, although now you resemble one who does not know, all the same, I wish to investigate, with your help, that we may both try to find out what it is. So that's as far as I'm going to go tonight. Um, so what he's going to do is, Menon's going to say, well, if I don't know what it is and you don't know what it is, how are we going to find out what it is? And Socrates is going to go into the greatest discussion about remembering everything you know from past lives and which is what I do on the every time I say would you be willing to claim on and acknowledge everything you aren't willing to claim on and acknowledge about what you know what you be what you perceive and what you receive now from other lifetimes that you are willing to perceive it and that's what I do on the call because every time you say yes you're opening up to this infinite potential that Socrates is going to open up us to on this book next Wednesday so call in hump day show 9 p.m. New York time, which is 6 p.m. Uh, what time? 6 p.m. California time. So that's all for today, folks. I'm going to read more of Plato because Plato is the man, the myth, the legend that I was trained by in a former incarnation that I'm able to now remember. And I'm going to do the same thing I'm doing to slow down the video that I did before. So if you guys didn't know what I did, I'm showing you now. So let's hope this slows down. Okay, we'll see when we have the replay because I can't know it's slowing down or not, but we'll know in the replay. Okay, I'm signing off the YouTube video now. Goodbye, YouTube people.